does this species have in common with this species? Or with this species of animal? And what do these animals have in common with this animal? As strange as it may seem, all four animals belong to the same major evolutionary group, or phylum, the phylum chordata. They are all chordates. Every chordate has four characteristic features inherited from its ancestors, but you won't necessarily see these in the adult. A 40-hour-old chicken embryo shows these characteristic features. An internal rod, or notochord, that will become the chicken's backbone. Lying next to the notochord is a hollow nerve cord on the dorsal side of the body, a hollow dorsal nerve cord. A tail containing both the nerve cord and notochord extends behind the animal's anus, a post-anal tail. Although difficult to see at this stage, the chicken embryo also has a set of embryonic gills, a feature more easily seen in a salamander larva. The gills are associated with the throat, or pharynx, and so are called pharyngeal gills. These embryonic gills will be lost as the salamander matures. All chordates show the four ancestral features, notochord, hollow dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal gills, and post-anal tail. The simplest chordates, the tunicates, or sea squirts, can often be found on ocean-side docks. These sac-like creatures have two openings, a mouth and an excurrent pore. The mouth has finger-like projections that filter out large objects. It opens into a mesh-like basket, a pharyngeal gill, used for oxygen exchange and for trapping suspended food. Driven by cilia, water circulates through the mesh and out the excurrent opening. To follow the path of food, we fed this one some charcoal particles. The charcoal became entangled in mucus, traveled to the side and down, accumulating in the tunicate's stomach. The charcoal shows that after digestion, the feces is eliminated near the excurrent opening. Tunicates have a unique type of circulatory system with a heart that pumps in one direction for a while and then switches, circulating the tunicate's clear blood throughout its body. Most tunicates have both sexes in one individual, and the gametes are squirted directly into the sea. The sperm swim until a chance encounter with a drifting egg. The fertilized egg develops into a microscopic, free-swimming larva, a tadpole larva, the stage that shows the chordate features. Beginnings of the pharyngeal gill, a notochord, beside the notochord a hollow dorsal nerve cord, and the extended post-anal tail. The larva swims only an hour or two and then settles. In the next two hours it makes a remarkable transformation. Tail and notochord are lost, and the larva begins to change into an adult tunicate. The juvenile tunicate will spend the rest of its life as an attached filter feeder. About a thousand different species of tunicates live in the world's oceans. Some have solitary lifestyles. Others live in social groupings. And some live communally, sharing a common excurrent opening. A related group, the larvaceans, lives in the open sea. They look like tunicate tadpole larvae, but these are adults. In larvaceans, there is no attached stage. Tunicates and larvaceans are members of the subphylum Eurochordata, a group that branched off early in chordate evolution. 
But how did the ancestors of these primitive chordates evolve into vertebrates such as fish and humans? The answer can be found by taking a hike. The high slopes of the Rocky Mountains may seem like a strange place to find animals that live in the ocean. But here, in ancient sediments, known as the Burgess Shales, are the imprints of early marine animals, including members of Phylum chordata. This animal, Picaia, is one of the earliest known chordates. Living in the oceans over 520 million years ago, Picaia shows the basic chordate characteristics. Notochord, dorsal nerve cord, pharyngeal gill, postanal tail. But Picaia had something else going for it, muscles. Angled pairs of muscles along the length of the body worked against its flexible notochord to propel Picaia through the water. Similar animals live today in shallow tropical seas, sea lancelets. This is the sea lancelet branchiostoma. Branchia, gill, stoma, mouth, gill mouth. Branchiostoma has the same angled muscle pairs seen in the Picaia fossils. This musculature allows branchiostoma to swim like an eel, curving its body in S-shaped waves. But most of the time, branchiostoma burrows into the sand, sticking its head out and, like a tunicate, pulling in suspended food using cilia on its pharyngeal gills. Branchiostoma and Picaia are examples of a second major group of chordates, the subphylum cephalochordata. Both the urochordates and the cephalochordates were early branches in the chordate line. 